G'day everyone, welcome back to Organic Power. Thanks for tuning in. Got a great winter's day. Plenty of juice coming in. But we've had our first failure of the off-grid. We'll go down to the shed now and check out what's happened. Our off-grid solar power system is just over two years old now. We'll take a look on the PC a little bit later in the episode. It's generated just over $11,000 worth of energy. It was halfway paid for itself. Now we'll go inside the shed and then take a look at the damage. Came in this morning to give the place a bit of a tidy up, vacuum the floor, just check things over. While I was here, checking the system, I found that the cooling system wasn't operating properly. Got the uh, little panel fan and that main fan there right across the panels working. But my exhaust fan stopped. You can see there's a bit of corrosion there. So I'm not happy about the placement underneath that whirly bird. I'm going to build a box that comes out over here. And a hole on the front there that'll suit that radiator fan. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. That way you can keep up to date with uh, the next release. Got a couple of new things coming up, some new arrays. So stay tuned. So I'll uh, do a bit of testing on that and just see if we've got voltage there still. And it's just the motor that's failed. Got some pins here, I'll stick into the wires and chuck the tester on there. Everything on the power wall, looking tip top. Just set the fans controlled. Thermostat up here. Once it reaches 28 degrees, that switches on. It's meant to expel the air out. The intake is uh, in front of these grills here. Got a barrel fan in there that blows through the main breakers. Everything's nice and cool. You can check out one of my episodes where I take the thermal camera check out the whole system, all the connections, see how things are. I've taken a couple of pins and stuck them through the insulation of the wires that run into the fan. Now I'm going to put my meter on that and check it. As soon as that thermostat kicks in, we should get 12 volts. I'll go and get some cutters now, snip around the edge here and cut that uh, fan out and leave the frame there, not going to disturb that and then we can join that wire onto the new fan once we've made that box. on the end of those wires, that'll make it easy when the fan gets here to plug it in. And when there's a failure in the future maybe, it'll make it easy to change. I need to check the polarity of that cable to find out which one is positive and which one is negative. The negative wire will have a male and the positive wire will have a female. done a test, the black wire is a positive, and the blue wire is a negative. And I'll chuck the female one on the black and the male on the blue. I'll crimp them on now. 
you can see there the positive wire is shielded and the negative wire is bare. This way there won't be a short circuit and the polarity will be correct when you plug it in. I'm also going to mount a power point on this panel here. Just a single GPO for that fan that's uh, connected to that thermostat. Rather than having the lead across the floor, I did have the fan elsewhere before, but I found that position works really well. While I'm down here, I'll check the voltage of each of the batteries. Take a look on the gauge. So happy with that. We'll go up to the house now, take a look at the system on the PC, see how it's been performing, and do the calculation of the energy provided. I've brought the system up on the PC. It's a perfect day outside. The batteries are full. The house is consuming 4.6 kilowatts. It's all going to the house and nothing to the battery. Now we'll take a look on the Victron Connect app. If you go across to your devices and select one, we'll bring this page up here. If we go down the bottom, we've got the lifetime total. So I'll take that figure down and also the figures from the 25060 and the 15035. We'll bring up a calculator. And we'll do the math. Here's the 25060 and the 15035. I've tallied up those figures. There's the 450200. We pay 34 cents a kilowatt hour. There's nine thousand three hundred and eighty-nine dollars. The two fifty sixty, one thousand three hundred and sixty-eight. And here's the one fifty, the six hundred and seventy dollars. There's the total, eleven thousand four hundred dollars. That's Australian dollars. The system owes us double that. We're two years in, so in another two years, it will have paid itself back and we'll have free power. So it's not a bad outcome. Four years, we'll be done and dusted. Here's the next project I'll be looking at. At the moment, on the shed, I've got 14 270 watt panels. I just got second hand ones, they're nice and cheap in the beginning. Save money just uh, while I was testing. And now we know the benefits. I'm going to upgrade those panels to 550 watt panels. I'll put uh, 12 of them on there. That'll be upgrading that array from 3.7 kilowatts to 6.6. .6. Be a good uh, increase. Because I'm going to be maxing out those two strings in the power shed, I'll lose my westerly. I have to reroute that over to the Primo. In total, there'll be 18 270 watt panels, which takes that 5 kilowatt Primo to 4.8 kilowatts. So it's nearly ideal. It's going to give it a great boost. Add that extra string and flick that array over to the AC coupled system. Stay tuned for that episode, it's coming up shortly. Thanks to everyone that's been subscribing to the channel and a big thanks to all our members. See the info on the channel. Be sure to check out a couple of episodes while you're here.
nearly got that duct complete. Gonna glue the bottom on now. Want some more glue around the edge. And tack it down. There's the base on. Got a couple of tacks in it now. Put that little bit on the back there to seal it up. And then we can fix it to the roof. That's all the hard work done. Now I just grab the jigsaw, cut this hole out. That's ready to be fitted up. Once I've got it all finished off and bolted to the roof, I'll chuck some of this aluminium extrusion around the edges to keep it neat and tidy. Before I carry on, I'll just show you how I mark that hole. It's a simple method. Just use a little stick there, halve your dimension that you need. Screw in the center and you can draw that line. I've put a bit of fresh masking tape on the bottom of the jigsaw to keep that surface nice and neat and tidy. And go ahead and cut that out now that we've got the hole. We can take that back in the power shed now and chuck it back up on that shelf. I'm fairly happy with that, looks pretty good. I'll wedge it up a little bit on that shelf, snug it up, put some screws in from the top, chuck these through the tin, with those bits of timber. We put in before, that'll be nice and secure. Got some packers there. Wedging it up into the roof. Ready to go outside now. Fix it off. All fixed in place now, I've taken the packers out, supporting itself. Now we've got to wait for that fan to come in in the mail, connect it up, screw it in, and the job's done. Stay tuned, that episode's coming up shortly. We're going to wiring this and also wiring that PowerPoint on the board behind us. Take it easy, guys, and we'll catch you at the next episode.